On the 5th of May, 1959, two months after the first bodies were discovered, the four remaining bodies are found. They lie in a ravine just 75 yards from where the first students were located, but they're hidden by deep snow. Their discovery shocks the rescuers. They all had terrible injuries. The traumas were so massive that they were comparable to being run over by a car. There's a close-up of Luda's body lying on what looks like a rock with the next to a stream. She was missing her tongue and the cartilage of her nose had literally been flattened as if she'd been punched very hard in the face and her whole nose had shattered under the impact. Some of these injuries could have happened post-mortem in the two months since their deaths, perhaps as the result of animal scavenging. On closer inspection, more anomalies are revealed. Instead of her shoes, Luda's feet were wrapped with pieces of clothing apparently taken from those students who died first. Stranger still, her jumper is emitting radiation. The investigation was led by a criminal investigator named Lev Ivanov. And during the investigation, he decided to check the level of radiation. A Geiger counter is usually a military item, not a civilian one. But he'd obviously been instructed to check for radiation. But the hikers were civilian mountaineers. Why would there be any radiation involved? In the wilderness of Russia's Ural Mountains, nine climbers are found dead in mysterious circumstances. Their bodies are laid to rest back in their hometown of Sverdlovsk, now called Yekaterinburg, and a memorial erected in their memory. Not long after, the investigation is brought to a close. The investigator had to make a conclusion that would satisfy the administration, the leaders of the Communist Party. And he did it. He wrote, the students were faced with a power they could not overcome.